A popular cliche in philosophy says that science is pure analysis or reductionism, like taking the rainbow to pieces. And art is pure synthesis, putting the rainbow together. This is not so. All imagination begins by analyzing nature. Michelangelo said that the material asserts itself through the hand and thereby prefigures the shape of the work for the brain. The sculptor, as much as the mason, feels for the form within nature. The best of artists hath no thought to show what the rough stone in its superfluous shell doth not include. To break the marble spell is all the hand that serves the brain can do. Sculpture is a sensuous art. The Eskimos make small sculptures that are not even meant to be seen, only handled. So it must seem strange that I choose as my model for science, sculpture and architecture. And yet, it's right. We have to understand that the world can only be grasped by action, not by contemplation. The hand is more important than the eye. We are not one of those contemplative civilizations of the Far East or the Middle Ages that believe that the world has only to be seen and thought about, and who practiced no science. We are active, and indeed we know in the evolution of man that it is the hand that drives the subsequent evolution of the brain. We find tools made by man before he became man. Benjamin Franklin called man the tool-making animal, and that's right. And the most exciting thing about that is that even in prehistory, man already made tools that have an edge finer than they need have. Henry Moore calls this sculpture the knife edge. The hand is the cutting edge of the mind. Civilization is not a collection of finished artifacts. It is the elaboration of processes. In the end, the march of man is the refinement of the hand in action. The notion of discovering an underlying order in matter is man's basic concept for exploring nature. The architecture of things reveals a structure below the surface, a hidden grain which, when it's laid bare, makes it possible to take natural formations apart and assemble them in new arrangements. For me, this is the step in the ascent of man with which theoretical science begins, and it's as native to the way man conceives his own communities as well as nature.